Alright. To anyone out there listening. This is just a documentation of our own personal not really recording diary journal whatever you want to call it whatever we want to call it basically it's just a audio recording of uh, our lives and what's been going on in a matter of speaking we're not really going to be developing really into our lives but just going about discussing topics that relates to what we're going through or what we've seen or how we would react so this title of this one will be the uh, CM Files number one a new adventure a new start Joining me here today is someone you may have recognized if you followed the history of my channel. Say hello. Hey, Golden Pistol. <laughs> and this was just an idea of mine that I unfortunately dragged him along to. He really didn't want to do this at all. But this is just something we're going to be doing. Mostly that I'm going to be doing because we don't know what's going to be coming in the future and we would just like well I, at least for me I would just like to make a video recording of things to happen so at the time of this recording it is 6 30 2022 at 8 10 p.m. now the main topic for this one right here will be like I said a new adventure a fresh start just new things now I know for you pistols it's Difficult adjusting into a new environment, correct? Yeah. Can you explain why? Um, as a teenager, really nothing to do out here. Like, can't even go see my friends. I'll add them. I'm legit pretty much by myself out here. And I just don't like the desert. I'm a city boy. <laughs> um, but like... You think you can like really like make new friends or anything? Like, is is it difficult for you? Is it is it like challenging or easy? Like, just kind of depends on their character or what. I don't think it's difficult to make friends. Easy, just so you know, say what's up. But me personally, I wouldn't. I I don't really feel like like meeting new people because. I always just stick with the ones that were there from the start. Because when you make new friends, you really got to like pay attention to what they're about. And then it's just going to be a whole long process. And, and yeah. <laughs> like for me though, for me personally, um, I never, I mean I was at a time uh, very like outspoken. I was always like really a people person. And when I first moved in my whole entire life, when I first moved to a, to a different school, I was shy. I was, I was nervous. I wasn't as I was with people I've been pretty much growing up with my life since uh, at the age of, uh, what's kindergarten? Five, four, five years old. And from then, I spent a good like five and a half years with these, with these kids, with these people and to have that like ripped from you um it, it's difficult and uh for me i really wasn't like social i guess um and you you just find clicks you know like like it's, it's the same thing with starting a job you know because i know you pistols you're gonna be ending up starting a job uh pretty soon um and it's just gonna be like turn this off it's just gonna be pretty much uh a bit awkward because you know you have to get adjusted into the environment into how people act and eventually as you adjust in you fade into the background and you just become another individual in that space right yeah but i don't know i mean like if you make yourself known 
like, like not like known, but like, like insert yourself in like activities or whatever that kind of is outside your comfort zone. Cause you're gonna have to do things that's outside your comfort zone to get what you're gonna wanna get. So yeah, you can still be probably in the background, like just like like an extra or whatever. But even still being an extra, you're gonna be able to to control a certain piece of the puzzle, pretty much. And what would you say, like? If you could choose something that you would like to just leave in the past, like you don't want to deal with it anymore, what, what would that be? Probably all the drama. Well, that's not going to happen. Like, yeah. <laughs> that ain't going to happen, man. All the drama. You have, you have drama no matter where you go, man. No matter who you are, where you're at, where you go, drama every time, you know. And it's just, I mean, everyone doesn't want to do any drama, you know, but it's going to happen, you know. Well, I mean, you could be like one of those people, oh, negative energy, I'm out. <laughs> or, but, I mean, you're still going to have to face something. But, like, are you able to adjust into a new environment, like, very easily? Like, you're just like, eh, whatever. Or, like, does it take time for you to... Like, like getting into a pool, you know? Do you just jump in in, in the situation or you're like cautiously dipping a toe and then a foot and so on? I mean, it depends. Out here, yeah, I gotta get used to it. <laughs> but like, like Riverside, that's like, I, I could just, I didn't care. I would just go, did, did, whatever. <laughs> but, Meet your next pillow. Oh, like, shit. Uh, like what? Like, because, like, it's a desert area out here, I have to get, like, used to it. I have to really adjust, see how people are. And I already see, like, so, like, just a lot of characters that I'm, I'm not typically around. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have to get used to them like that. Now, so, just to jump off of topic, you know, just, just to, not just, you know, we're just going around in circles eventually, you know, like, pretty much everyone has their own perspective of what they're gonna do, you know, let's just, let's delve into, like, future aspects, you know, like, where do you see yourself after you graduate high school? Like, what do you, what do you want to really be doing? Um, um probably gonna continue working I'm gonna try working you know when I'm able to start working and then just either probably work in mechanics and start my own business or just be able to learn different like go to schooling to learn like electrician mechanics different stuff so that way I can just like you know, either work for myself or work for someone else depends what I want to do I would start to see like you know. <laughs> that's one thing though like at the job that I'm at right now um, they that's that's the thing like they, they want you to basically live there you know like they were telling me like you know I hope you guys came here to work because you're gonna work and thankfully from where i'm at you know the department i'm working in my uh trainee the one who runs the thing i don't know the one i have to go to to call the shots with you know like i have the managers and you know i guess the store manager is the top tier person um but the training guy, he says, like, yeah, you're going to get your 40 hours even though you're part-time, which doesn't make me... I'm, I'm listed as part-time, but I'm going to hit my 40 hours, and it's, like, tomorrow, right? Like, I have to go in at 10 a.m. I don't leave till 7 p.m., you know? I'm basically... The whole day is at work, you know? Like, I tend to go to sleep at 9, you know? That, that, it gives 
an hour and 45 minutes of a great period of downtime, which is basically eat and then sleep. You know, eat, watch the uh, uh, YouTube videos, TV shows, movie, and then just, you know, sleep. And that's what I really wasn't mentally prepared when graduating. You know, school doesn't really prepare you once you graduate. They prepare you for the things to pass high school and maybe get you into college just to um, get like the, the basic academics to get to college and things. But they don't mentally prepare you once you've hit that 18 mark. Right? That's the thing, like, they, they don't really, like, I feel like they don't really, like, they just force their like knowledge onto you like um like i feel like we really only need math language um you know so they're saying like like you should choose the type of field you want to work in and uh well not not like choose just like what we really need because like before like how back in the day when our parents were going to school they have, you know, like, they could do construction or whatever, like, woodworking and right. engineering, like, learning how to drive and stuff for school. Now, they don't, all they do is just teach you math, history, language. Well, like, you know. like, in my middle school at, uh, at this one area, um, they, they had a woodshop class, and that was f- freaking awesome, you know? And really, you only need to learn basic math for woodshop you know just how many inches there are to measure to mark it and that's it you don't really need like diameter or radius or like how deep to cut the hole and it's just like after that class there was also a an automotive shop and you can make a a wood ring i remember that was always told like you can make a wooden ring a plastic ring a metal ring you know there, there was so much unique choices to do in school you know like but now it's like art ceramics maybe yeah. uh, cooking maybe cooking uh computer computers is, is always it computers is always um, freaking there at my old school we did um music like on like computer. appreciation or like like music appreciation or like what no like we used to be able to like learn how to like like uh put music together and stuff like Make your own like beats and stuff. Uh, kind of oh, like okay, that. like like techno stuff, like yeah, yeah like, like synthetic or. Well, I, um, I wasn't in that class, so oh. my friend was, and he said you just like put random stuff together or whatever, like make whatever type of beats you want and stuff. And, but also though, like with those classes, you need to have a teacher that not only loves what they're doing, but loves teaching you about it. You know, the, the, I, people say that every student's different, and yeah, that may be true. But if you have a really good teacher that knows what they're doing and loves to inspire you or even just like grab your attention to it, you'll appreciate it more, even if you don't really like it. Yeah. Like my um, math teacher, he would like always be like honest, like about doing our work, whatever, whatever. And he would always like uh, assign us projects where we like got to go outside, you know, do activities and stuff. And that like low key like got me like into it. Instead of just like sitting around, oh, do this problem, do that problem, and then he just sit down, like, like m- m- most teachers would do. Yeah. And like every like this uh, one guy, know, she she even like she never used to do her work, but then after like he would like always be constantly getting on her, uh, like not like that, but you know. <laughs> Yeah. She she would uh she started doing her work and stuff, and then she was actually like getting like at least I think a B minus or something. She was doing pretty good. <laughs> and you know, like I just I I bring up the whole uh, Feeny situation, you know, like, like watching Boy Meets World, you know, and seeing the actor I forget the man's name, but the actor, the man who played Mr. Feeny. You don't see that in teachers that much, you know, like, like, man, my elementary school, like, compares yours to mine, because you, you really never really had a set elementary school until, uh, what, third grade, second grade? Uh, After, like, second grade? Yeah, second grade. Yeah, um, but for me, like, oh, man, I have to hand it to my kindergarten teacher, because she would just do so much to inspire you 
for you to love to learn not just like like it or like understand it but actually love to learn academics you know the abcs or one two threes um like little bits of history she taught us all about the uh, the american um what would you call them american folk tall tale folk tale like davy crockett or paul bunyan or uh, i mean i never read those no but we didn't either but like she would brought she would bring up johnny appleseed the wright brothers oh like she would just like mention them no she wouldn't mention them she so on the wall uh, her classroom was pretty pretty big um it was a split between two teachers but for the am kids that was me um on the walls would be like cartoon drawings of american literature uh, like the Wright Brothers and the Paul Bunyan, Johnny Appleseed, you know, Abraham Lincoln, things like that. And she had this back room where uh, you, we were, as kids, we were able to go in there. There was like a bunch of toys and things for us to do. But there was a costume bin and she'd go and uh, dress up. She would like, we, she'd make a whole thing. Like we had like these chairs that were sit in a semicircle and you were uh, every, so, no, 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 every quarter you were a different color shape. So you could be like a blue square, a yellow rectangle, a red triangle, a green circle, whatever. And you would just rotate and you'd sit with different people, you interact with them like that. But on these seats, and they were just seats, they weren't desks, they were just seats with the, your own little basket. And your basket would have all your uh, work and stuff, but she would attach some seat belts. So you'd strap in and like, she's like, we're going on a, a, a time machine trip back in time to visit this American person and she like make it all I forgot how it went but she'd make it all like so spectacular that she'd get sucked into the back room and when as kids were like what is going on and out pops this American uh, person right here like Johnny Appleseed and I remember like she was like like this one time she got a, a lollipop stick and she ate it and then she threw the lollipop stick outside I know littering is bad but she threw it outside and she's like all right let's just say all the magic words so we say all the magic words and we sing like a lollipop song or whatever and she opens the door and it was just a, a small little tree with lollipops stay uh taped to it but as kids it was a freaking giant massive lollipop tree that a freaking tree that sprouted lollipops and we each got to have one there was like it was so cool she just made learning so fun we learned about Native Americans. We learned about other families that are that come from different ethnicities. You know, we again strap the seatbelts on and we pretend like we're on a plane and things. And and I, I look back on that and just think she did so much to inspire us to continue to have that love for learning. And our first, second, third, fourth grade teachers did that as well, though they had to be more professional about it. But my kindergarten teacher really just planted that seed in and I that was the very first time I ever felt like I was crying that I was leaving that I was graduating because you didn't want that to to end you know and seeing like a lot of teachers now it's by the book you know and it after you hit a... like, like uh, my chemistry teacher, he he would just read stuff off of the board that either he fixed some some stuff in the slides, or he used um, other people's like other teachers' slides, and like they all just pretty much shared the same slide. And he would just like uh, read what was on the slide, and then uh, we he, we were expected to understand it. He didn't really explain like he would explain it but it, like no one really understood and then he would go off on a tangent like oh see i wouldn't explain this and then he would say explain it okay and then he'd be like it's just gonna make you confused and then like why would you even say it if it's just gonna make us confused and just give us what we need to understand it not like i get it but at the same time you're already confusing us more like so that's why like i didn't really i didn't really do good in chemistry because like because of that reason i didn't have a good teacher really like and then he wouldn't he would i mean granted 
uh, us kids wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> but, I mean, we would still, like, pay attention and try to do our best in our work. Right. But. Well, it's like, you have to, you know, you want to yeah. pass the class. And... But, like, the labs, he would just have us figure it out on our own. And then he would, like, kind of give us help, but he wouldn't give us help at all. We were just, we were just, like, uh, did you take notes? Okay, then read your notes. He wouldn't really, like... And then sometimes if you asked him, then he would, like, you know, okay, yeah, yeah, this, this. But how he explained stuff, it, he really still didn't understand nothing. But, um... That's why pretty much I had to just, like, learn a little bit about chemistry on my own, pretty much. Because that's how pretty much... That's how we were taught. We just read what was on the board, take notes, and then that was it. But like you know, just how it is. That's just uh, what I'm gonna tell you right now, and to anyone listening as well who's who hasn't gotten there yet. Once you turn 18, now I I don't know what you're gonna go through. Okay, I've I've heard where some parents they start charging you rent, some parents kick you out of the house. Our parents thankfully never did that. But we, I mean, for me personally though, because. Pistols hasn't started working yet. For me, I, you know, felt as it's my responsibility now to uh, to contribute because cost of living is ridiculous. But once you hit 18, though, and you and you get your first job, let's just say even you work at 16, 17, 15, even you know, once you actually get a paying job, not just one that pays on the table, like you go on your own. And you get a job all on your own. Once you've gotten that, it hits you differently because, again, no one, maybe some some of you guys have gotten like a little lecture about it, but no one prepared me for my first job. And my first job, I was a, uh, I can say now because I'm gone and that and I've been gone for years. Um, I was a uh, dental technician. Okay. And my duty was to get a porcelain tooth, a porcelain crown, I should say, to be more scientific terminology to be used, um, and to seat it on a plaster model of the patient's mouth. That stuff that they have people bite into, uh, that's what they took an impression of, and they would send it to the plastering milling, they make a mold, and yada, yada, yada. But I only got that job because a friend of a friend, a, a family friend, was there. If it wasn't for that individual, I wouldn't have never been able to even apply that position. But the first day that I was there, they don't teach you properly. They don't do anything. So all I did that my very first day, okay, and this this is a, a, a bit insulting on YouTube as well so all I did my first day was I was I learned how to use the tools that they use all right I'll give them that but rather than working on like practice cases all I did was just use the tools to grind extra crowns that they had lying around and just to learn the functionality of the tool and um, I was given a packet of uh, Having all the numbers of their two of your mouth, uh, all the names, the, the basic terminology that they use, um, and I took a little quiz. And my manager at the time, who was there when I was working, uh, he came to me, and he asked me a question. I forgot the first question. Oh yeah, yeah. So he said to me, uh, "How many sides are on a crown?" And that's basic common sense now when I look at it, but when I was just nervous, I, got, I was out of high school, I was completely nervous my first day, you know, I, I don't want to make myself, like, look like I wasn't doing anything, um, I, uh, I guessed, because I, I gave an educated guess, I said, there are two faces, because he said, how many faces are there on a crown, so I'm thinking faces, okay, that's just the... The front side and the back side, or the, the mandible and the lingual. And uh, he raised an eyebrow. And I'm thinking, no, he's like, no, how many faces are there? 
Um, thank you, Felix. Uh, maybe, oh, okay. Uh, maybe it's uh, uh, front, back, and the sides. You know, four, four of them, you know? And he's like, he, he reaches and gets one of the fake teeth, the extra, the extra crowns, and he points. There are six sides. There's the front, the back, the two sides, the top and the bottom. And that wasn't on the, the study guide. And it's only common sense now. But I felt so devastated. Like, I, I, I thought I left this bad impression that I wasn't doing anything at the job, you know? And that's something that people that I despise, okay? When I'm at work and I don't know, it's only, you can only ask questions so much. It's once you actually get your hands on the job and do the work, that's when you're gonna run into some problems because everyone, people can't teach you everything about the job. You just, as they say, experience is the best teacher. But once you get started on it, you're gonna run into some problems. And that's the thing that I always wondered, like, how come jobs, like, say, you have to have experience, but you never had experience? No, that, that's <laughs> the thing, it's a, a, what's it called, a paradox? I don't know. It, it's it's you need experience to get the job. You have to get the job to get the experience, you know. Yeah. And but what I'm saying is like these the, the people at the jobs, the managers, and whoever, they are not. Uh, in uh, nicer words, they're not good teachers because ultimately, they in a way don't care about you. As in, you better just do the work. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So, that's why, like, for you, I want you to work where I'm working at. Because that way, you can, once I learn what to do here, and hopefully you get my position, and work in the same place, I can take you under my wing and show you the ropes and, and show you this, these people are cool. This person's cool. Don't ever mess with this guy. Watch out for him. Don't believe a word he says. Don't listen to that idiot. You know, because I want to get you naturally settled in into a job. Whereas where I was just told well, to I get mean, a job. I mean, and like, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. Like, you know, like being in the streets. Like, you know, you gotta, you, you just learn basics. Like, uh, you know, you know, don't. But it's always it's now. always good to have someone with insight to whatever you're in. You know, whether yeah. that be on the streets, a house. You know, like, like I don't even know how to go about buying a house. You know, or like buying a new car. You know, what what questions do you ask? You yeah, know, that, that's like the same thing back in school. Though. Like, they don't teach you nothing about. That's why I feel like school is really not important because they don't teach you anything about how to you know survive in like the real world. Like how how to you know do taxes, how to do uh, get a house, how to you know build your credit, how to do all of that. And if you're lucky enough, you actually have you know parents that'll teach you that. And then, well, hey, you're lucky then. Or if you already you know uh, you were born into a good family that you know they have you know whatever they're rich, they're doing this, that, and that, whatever. And then that's why school doesn't really got. I feel like you don't really need schooling because. The only basic thing you need to well, learn. Well, you do. It's just, you know, again, it, it comes down to who's teaching you. And if you're also giving your 110% and more to study what you're going to do. Because, sadly, no one cares about your life except you and God. But you're going to have to choose and make choices, make decisions of everything, you know, of... What friends you're gonna keep? Are you gonna keep your friends, your job, your, you know, your priorities, your hobbies? You know, it, it's a constant balance, you know. And again, you know, work it it gets in the way sometimes because you are just eight. That think about it. There are 24 hours in a day. Eight hours you sleep. Eight hours. Eight hours you work. Eight hours, you play, you you eat, you sleep more, you know, there, there's not enough time, you know. So, you're only doing your own stuff a third of the day, you know. And 
we've come as a society to accept that you know we we've come in an uh, anonymous agreement that this is okay you know and it's it, it's a it's a problem because i see it all the time on social media like everyone's like wow you know like we just like hardly ever see friends because we're all on different schedules we're all always you know doing this doing that doing our job you know we got our own stuff to do we meet new people we become distant with the former friends we had because well we're focusing on our life you know as much as we love our friends or family or whoever we still got to focus on us you know it, it's a in a way a selfish thing but also a necessary one sort of because no one's gonna do anything for you except for you you got to put in your effort you know and like they don't again they don't mentally prepare you for what you're about to face in the real world because experience is the best teacher but if you're not ready you're gonna crash hard and people fall into depression people fall into a sickly depression that some don't ever escape you know and it's funny cause like a lot of like you know like famous people they're like oh we gotta help the homeless and everything but yet they still like to be you know sitting on top with all their money and still like oh yeah this is a problem but yeah like, you, like you, you can be like me if you apply the effort yeah. you know but they don't want you to be like them because that creates competition with yeah. their their thing they're, they're always competing to be on top you know and make the money yeah you know and, like and then it sucks because if you're born into being rich then you're either going to be liked by people or hated that because you know you're born in you're born living good you're born you know you don't have, you didn't have to struggle you know nine to five job or you know living in old apartments with you know roaches and everything and that's why like but I'm, I'm like me personally I don't get jealous like I'm glad that you know you're doing good but don't don't like you know try to rub it in like, other people's face like you know you gotta stay humble don't be like you know boasting that oh look what I did look what I can do and everything don't like yeah that's cool what you do now you know try and like you know help other people to you know be able to learn what you're doing or not not just be like oh you can't be like me and you know try to act all bad that's why like I don't really, like, a lot of people get on my nerves because, like, they, I feel like they just, like, feel like they're better than this person or better than that person. Like, we all, we all came from something. We all had to learn how to do something. Or sometimes even nothing. But yeah, but that's why I say, like, you know, being born good. Well, because, like, like, recently I saw on a, um, a Facebook page, um, I never knew this guy. But apparently this kid, uh, he murdered his own child. I don't know how the baby is. That that's means nothing anyway. Murder is still almost unforgivable. And I say almost because there's always... Recently? Yeah, it was recently. So how I do the taxes? Huh? I don't know. The bill that... They I, don't, I don't know why. Um, I just... I, again, I never, I never seen this kid. I never knew him. It's just uh, in the area that we previously lived, um, he murdered his own child. I don't know if it, if uh, he had a girlfriend at the time or whatever, but he brought a life into this world. And for whatever the reason was, there's no excuse, but for his reason why he chose to do so, he took a life and his own offspring it doesn't matter who what life it was but it should have devastated it should have cut him deep that it was his own child and the dude's young the dude's like my age you know yeah. or maybe like a bit younger i don't know um and then uh, a friend of a uh, high school friend uh posted on their uh, ig story and was saying like oh yeah like if you uh, were to see this guy uh, he was always like strange and weird, you know, and it just <laughs> that's the thing. Like, you don't know someone until something happens. Like, you don't care about anybody and you don't think of anyone until 
something happens, whether they become famous and rich well, or... Look at the one uh, Texas shooting guy that killed, you know, his grandmother. But did it, did it, like, it, it immediately pops into my head with that kid that uh, I felt sorry for him. Now, it, again, it doesn't excuse what he did, but like I, I felt a bit hurt of myself because now this kid wasn't known or was just was just known by a few people now he's known throughout the whole world as a murderer um not just even that but like a murderer of children elementary you know elementary. and because of that now that's all he will be remembered as whatever he did in the past and that's the thing like whenever you do sin you commit a mistake you can go your whole life doing absolutely perfectly be a good person but the second you sin the second you make a mistake everyone focuses on that like michael jackson like uh alvis uh like you know a lot of people that you know and it, it just it takes you know you, you still have to face the consequences of what you did yes but who among society because i know i did but i felt it in my heart to pray for that kid now for talking about the man who recently killed his kid in our old residence area that guy is still alive and it's Why a, he gonna die soon in jail <laughs> he, is. he has to come to his to his own self and get on his knees. That's the thing, like, some people, some people are just, like, like, really, really, like, dark. Like, they just, they just don't care. But, no, but again, like, in, no one's really born in that sense. No one comes, becomes evil, you know? Well, uh, no one starts off as evil, you know? Well, I mean, depends. Look at, look at Hitler. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I guarantee... That it's through his upbringing, you know, not not because he was born evil. No, no one is born evil, though. I'm baby, though I'm sure. Like... <laughs> you ever seen that that duck that duck cartoon? Uh, what duck? Uh, it was this one about a uh, Hitler as a duck, and they were talking about like it, it was weird. Uh, <laughs> Just look it up. It was freaking weird. Oh, I think I think I remember. He freaking the duck's born is all you know, see hi, you know, oh, yeah. like. <laughs> It was an outlandish cartoon. You know, when cartoons back in that time, yeah. man, like freaking jungle jitters. You know, like yeah, that ass of one. Um, even Mickey Mouse did that. You know, Mickey Mouse did blackface. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't. It's it was a wild that, time the back thing, then. Like, like a lot of people now get butt hurt, no? like for real. You can't well, there there are certain things you you can't say. You know. Well, yeah, I know. But they yes, get, get comedy is hurtful. Comedy extends from some sort of pain. My personal favorite is I love to make fun of myself. You know, the, I. It goes both ways. If like someone were to make fun of me, that there's there's a line you don't cross. You know, uh, this is like your friends. You know, every you have a group of friends, you make fun of each other. Yeah. There are things you don't, or like there's a limit to how much you can make fun of, but you you just make fun of each other. You know. Yeah. You don't know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, just, you know. So, that's just for you as a little uh, audio recording thing, though. It's just, I want you to just, you know, and that, that, it's just something I do. I just, I, I plan ahead. But, again, I live in a, in a, in a sense of fear, kind of. And it, it, it's, I shouldn't, but I do. Well, I mean, everyone lives in fear, like, cause like, well, like it, it got so bad. Like, I swear to you, it got so bad that while I was working at the, at the dental lab, I would imagine like, I, cause I I got so fed up with that job. Like, I was on the verge of tears. I didn't want to be there anymore because of how bad it was managed. And I would I would these thoughts would pop into my head, thinking like, what if mom and dad were to get into a car crash? You know, like. How would I be able to take care of you? Because the cost of living, what I was making, I was doing twelve dollars an hour. That ain't a lot. You know? That was by the case. It is, 
but if you don't hit quota, you're compensated for the hourly. I was making three seventy-five a week. Three seventy-five a week, back in twenty seventeen. That's nothing. Uh, maybe uh, maybe like three seventy-five to four hundred. That's how much I was maxing out. I was getting paid sixteen hundred uh, a week or a month. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got we got uh, twelve uh, an estimate of twelve minutes to to do. Um, anything you want to just say? Anything you need to add? Just just throw it out there, man. Any topics you heard ever seen or whatever. Uh, back on like how you saying like you know like you kind of live in fear. Uh, like, I feel like everyone like kind of ha- lives in a little bit of fear because. You don't know what's gonna happen today or tomorrow or in the future. You're just gonna have to, you kinda have to live in the moment. Cause, like, literally, when I was going to school, um, you know, people saw me as, like, you know, an enemy target. I didn't know either when I was gonna either have to get in a fight or, you know, I was gonna get jumped maybe that day or whatever. And that's why, like, you know, like, you just gotta, like, Kind of like, you know, well, like, toes, that's the you know? thing, though, like, because, again, yeah, you don't know, you could walk outside and get shot, get struck by lightning like that lady did, like, for me and uh, our dad, um, back in, when it was 2011, 2012, 2011, uh, we we're going to a store, this is when we first moved to, uh, you know, the Los area. we were over there. You were you were in this is when you killed my rat. Oh. Yeah. So your grandma? Yeah. Oh, okay. So we were going to the store and uh, I forgot if this guy cut us off or something. But the dad pulled up right beside him and the guy did a motion a, a gesture where it looked like he had a gun. I didn't see no gun, but he like did a motion like he had one and then he looked at me and the light turned green and the man just took off, he just went. Like he was mostly fixated on, on dad and then uh, me being, I was like a bit smaller than I am now. Um, then he saw me in the back and he left, you know. But if, I wonder though, if I wasn't there, would that man, you know, commit that, that sin? You know, would he have shot our father? You know, and it's like, just... Like recently too, when um, our pops was taking me to the to uh, the doctors and everything. Um, some guy also like, you know, like drove past us fast when we when we were trying to, you know, like just drive like normally drove past, like not really cut us off but like he like just sped around us. And so then, you know, how that gets, you know, he got mad so he uh, the guy parked on the end of the street and so then um, we drove and went up next to him and it was like a white guy and he like uh, was like either getting out of the car or something or something but he uh like, you know like uh dad rolled down the window and he was like what's up and the guy was like what's up and so then i don't know if he like he, he looked like he was kind of reaching for something like on the door either he was like just getting out and he was just you know like getting out the car or whatever but he looked at the back of the car too like to see if there's anyone in there or something and i was like he's probably seen he probably seen me and then it's not really like, you know, no one else in the back of the car is probably going to do something. But I probably just say, you know, drop off. Like, he just, like, left. He did? Or her dad? Her dad. He just drove off. And, like, I don't know if that guy was reaching for a gun or whatever, but... It's but, just, it's crazy, like, because, like, you never know. You, you think yeah. yourself, like, this could be it, you know, this is... But, like, <laughs> looking, like, I'm not really, like scared to like you know die like cause well, I, I don't like, think I am either. I, it's just like the pain boy. what are you gonna feel yeah, that's what I'm like yeah, thinking it's just the pain but I mean like at the same time like yeah it's actually gonna hurt the people that you know are still here but I mean I would want them you know to be happy that I don't gotta deal with nobody no more than that's that. yeah and it's like I, at times you know like, I, I feel as though like I I kind of wish I died in the hospital though, all those years ago. That's a story for another time. But it's like the cost 
for a child in any family household, especially now, is outrageous, especially man. Especially when you got young kids. That that's another mouth to feed. <laughs> yeah, that, that's like I, there was this Instagram video of like this woman and her husband. She, how she makes breakfast for her twelve children, you know, and it's like a big freaking pot of eggs, and she like like two dozen eggs, you know, just. Cracking in the freaking syringe with a big, big bowl mixer, you know, packing uh, school meats and everything for them. It's, it's crazy, you know. I'm just thinking, like, damn, man, how, how do you manage that, mm. you know? And I, uh, so that's why people don't want to get kids. One, that's one reason why. Um, but just, you know. Um, like, uh, like recently, you know, a lot of people be like, oh yeah, look at all the. Um, Companies now they're getting like you know like to not have kids like Plan B and stuff. But all the companies now they're, they're starting to make things. <laughs> and it's like people people are still like you know kind of okay with this. They just try to find another pop like another way to go around it. Like like how, that's how people think you know. And it's like, yeah. That's why I just like kind of sit back and just watch it happen. <laughs> Let's see. Anything else? Anything else you could think of? Anything? No? Well, I guess uh, we'll just end. How long has this been? How long has it been? You've been recording for. What do you think about Damn, we've been recording for 46 like... freaking minutes. What do you think about the beef with. Uh... I'm playing. <laughs> Um, we'll uh, do another one of these videos uh, probably like a week and a half, two weeks from now. We'll get more stories and topics and things. Trust, every day we have a story. Every day we have, <laughs> if we could tell you like everything that happened in our life, oh boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is just a little short video for us. Just mostly it's for you, for, uh, entertaining for you guys and uh, self reflection for us. Um, titled the CM Files. A new adventure, a new beginning, a new fresh start. Uh, we thank you all for joining in. Uh, this is lots of fun. And, and Golden Pistol. Two. Two. <laughs> Title of the CM Files. And um, as always, uh, if it's your birthday, I've seen this from YouTube, but if it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. And uh, always keep your chin up. Keep smiling, keep, keep trying, keep... Believing, keep having hope, keep having faith. Because, get out. <laughs> well, he, yeah, he, we are complete opposites. I'm more of a goody two shoes type of individual, and my brother over here is more of a. I get into trouble. <laughs> that explains his character and to a T. But again, we appreciate you all for stopping on by and listening if you are out there. And just have a good day. Have a good night, have a good evening, have a good tomorrow, have a good week, have a good month, have a good year. This is lots of fun and... Golden Pistol 2. Signing off for tonight. See ya.